welcome to my YouTube channel, The Concepts of ICT. In this lesson, I am going to introduce you to the concept operating system. So before discussing what is an operating system, let's first discuss about the computer. What are the main components of a computer? In a computer, you find the things that you basically see, the components. What are they? They are simply called the hardware. The monitor, keyboard, mouse, the system unit, all those things comes under hardware. They are things that you can touch, you can see. And there's another thing which is called software. What are software? There are the intangible things inside the computer that you use to do your work using the computer. And there are software which are used to maintain the computer which are used to manage the computer and the other thing is firmware what is firmware it is something like the software but not exactly the software they are basically used to communicate within the hardware we call some examples for firmware are the device drivers which simply tell the computer how to communicate within the hardware components that are connected to the computer. So those are the main components of the computer or the computer system. So now let's discuss about the boot up process or the booting up process. What happens when you turn on the computer? Have you seen the process? Have you watched it closely? What do you see when you turn on the computer? So when you turn on the computer first, what you see is you see some lights blinking on the computer on the keyboard on the mouse or the, or the hardware components then you see a logo comes up in the monitor or the display unit it can be the windows logo or some other operating system logo so that is what you simply see when you turn on the computer. So what happens inside the computer when you turn on it? The first thing that happens inside is it loads up the firmware called BIOS. B-I-O-S. What is BIOS? It is an abbreviation. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. So that is a firmware which is installed inside the ROM of a computer. So it tells the computer how to turn on the computer or boot up the computer. It has the instructions what should be done at the booting up process. It is mainly installed by the manufacturing company of the computer or the motherboard. So it tells how to boot up the computer. So what it does, the first step it perform is POST post or we call it the power on self test that is what you see when you turn on the computer you see the blinking of the lights of the keyboard mouse and all the things that is what post does it checks all the devices connected to the computer whether they are performing correctly all the hardware it, it checks all the hardware for their performance. So after that, what it does is, it reads the MBR or Master Boot Record, where it, it, where it finds the details of the, the operating system, where the, the operating system is installed, like things. Then after reading that MBR or the Master Boot Record, it loads the operating system that's when you see the the logo of the operating system so when the operating system is loaded up it starts working that's where you are going to start your work using the computer so i gave you an introduction for the hardware software and firmware now we are going to discuss about software in more detail what is the software we know that that it is an intangible thing 
and software is described or defined as a set of instructions that we give to the computer to perform a particular task. What is that? The computer is simply a machine. It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't know how to do works. But we do work. We work with the computer. We, we perform many tasks using the computer. So how do we do them? We do them through the software. The software are written by human beings or the computer programmers. So, a software simply is a set of instructions that we give to the computer using its uh, own language. We give the instructions to the computer in its language, otherwise it doesn't understand. So, after we give the instructions, we can use the computer through those instructions. We say what we want and it performs that using those set of instructions. So that is what a software is. So when we discuss about software, we can classify them as application software and system software. What are they? Application software are the software that we use to perform our tasks. The software as word processing, Excel, or a spreadsheet, uh, the Photoshop software, things like that, or the gaming software. So they are basically used to perform our things, our, our needs to execute them. So those are called the application software. And the other type is system software. So what is a, what is a system software? It is basically used to perform the works of the system or the computer. It, they are mainly used to maintain the computer or manage the computer, manage the resources of the computer. So when we discuss about this system software, it again can be classified as operating systems, utility software and language translators. So now we have come to operating systems. Before discussing about operating systems, let's first discuss about the utility software and language translators. So utility software basically are used to manage or make for the maintenance of the computer hardware. Some of the utility software that we mainly used are the antivirus software, disk defragmentation, disk checkup, disk formatting, things like that. So they are basically used to maintain or yes, for the maintenance of the computer system. Then the language translators, what are they? I previously told you that the software are given in computer's language, which is the machine language. So do we know the machine language? Yes, we do, but it is not easy to give instructions using machine language. Machine language simply is the ones and zeros or the binary numbers. We can't simply give instructions using those. So, we give instructions using our own languages, not exactly the English signal like languages, but you must have heard the languages like Java, Pascal, Python, C Sharp, C++, those things. So, we write instructions using those languages, but the computer cannot understand them. So it has to be translated to its language or to the machine language. So these are the software that we use to translate uh, the set of instructions that we have written in our language to the machine language. We simply use some uh, translator like, translators like assembler, compiler and interpreter. We learn about them in, uh, in the latter part. Okay, now let's discuss what is an operating system. We define an operating system as the interface between the computer user and the computer hardware. In the, the process of computer boot up, I told you that once the operating system loads, only you can start working. Otherwise, up to that, you can't perform anything. 
the only thing you can do is just turning on the computer or just install an operating system so once the operating system starts working you can start doing your work so that is the interface that you used to control the hardware of the computer without the operating system you can't perform anything with our knowledge with the knowledge of a simple user you can't do anything using the operating system all the all the applications work on the operating system if you have experience on installing software when you are going to download or when you are going to install the software it does what is your operating system you can't install the software which is made for windows on mac computers so the application software all the application software works on the operating system all the hardware works uh, with the operating system you can control them only through the operating system so what are the operating systems that you know we have already already spoken of a few operating systems we came up with the name windows and mac so those are some examples for operating systems what are the other operating systems that you know we use operating systems not only in the computers we use them in the mobile or the smartphones as well not only in smartphones in mobile phones uh, the ones that we use before the smartphones also we have operating systems so what are the operating systems used in them simply in uh, smartphones we find android ios blackberry os things like that and there are there is another operating system which is called linux or ubuntu which are called the free and open source software the windows and mac are commercial software and this linux software is a free and open source software as the android so without this operating system you can't use these devices the computers or the mobile phones so when we discuss about the types of operating systems we can classify all these operating systems into few types according to the way they are being used the main classifications are we call them single use operating systems multi use operating systems multitasking operating systems and real time operating systems and uh, we can classify them as this as well that we call them the single use single task operating systems single use multi task operating systems multi use multi task operating systems and real time operating systems what are they single use single task means it seems simply say that the, the operating system is used only by a single user and we can only perform a single task at a given time what are the examples for this type of software or the operating systems you might not have used these but the dos operating system this operating system this is a single user single task operating system and single user multi task operating systems these operating systems can only be used by a single user and he can perform many tasks at the same time what are the examples for this type of operating systems the operating system that we simply use windows xp windows 8 10 these are single user multitask and mac os ios android these are single user multitask only it can only be used by a single user but he can perform many tasks you can type a document while listening to songs so that is multitasking okay then multi user multitasking so these operating systems can be used by many users at the same time what are they they are the the operating systems that are used in server computers which is mainly used by thousands of people at the same time so windows server is the simplest example for the server operating system you can find server operating systems in linux versions as well so 
Just remember, Windows Server is an example for uh, a server operating system. Then a real-time operating system. What is a real-time operating system? Real time means it doesn't take much time for processing. Once it gets the input, it produces the output. It doesn't take time for processing. So Linux RTOS or real time operating system is an example for real time operating systems. These are used in manufacturing as well to increase the time or to increase the throughput. It doesn't take much for processing. So those are the types of operating system that we use. Uh, those are the classifications of the operating systems. So that is what we are going to learn in this lesson. In the next lesson on this operating system lesson series, we are going to learn about the services provided through the operating systems. How it helps uh, to communicate with the hardware, how it manages the resources of the computer, things like that. So that's all for today's lesson. If you like my videos or if you want to learn more about the concepts of ICT, please subscribe my channel. So thanks for watching. See you on the next lesson. Thank you.